So in this question here, I've got an integral from negative infinity to infinity of x plus 1 in my numerator. My denominator is x times x squared plus 4 and regards to x. Now, to do this integral in real analysis, we're going to need partial fraction decomposition. We're going to need logarithm and arc tangent function moving forward to get to our result. And definitely some u substitutions along the way. So there's a lot to do to get to this integral result. Now, one other way we could go about this is use complex analysis. Now, to change this into complex analysis would be pretty straightforward to do a setup from the beginning. So I could rewrite this integral using my complex variable, negative infinity to infinity. So I'm not going to change the parameters and I'm just going to let my x be my z. So my z plus 1 over z, z squared plus 4. And then all with regards to dz. So I'm going to let x be z, where z is in the complex plane. Now x is in real analysis. So I'm going to leave that like that for now. So that's what we've got so far. Now what can we do there? Well, what we need, first of all, is to have a look closely at the integrand. Now, in my denominator, if I foil that out, I'll get z cubed and some other bits to make a polynomial. In my numerator, I've got a linear term, z plus 1. Now, the degree of the numerator is 2 less than the degree of the denominator. So, the technique I'm going to show you guys now is valid for that reason to begin with. So let's have a look what's going on here. So first of all, let's factor out this denominator in terms of complex analysis. So now I'm going to go from negative infinity to infinity, z plus 1, and now let's completely factor out this denominator. Well, z squared plus 4, I'm going to leave my complex numbers in there, so I'm going to have Difference of two squares, which is two i. So I'm going to have z, z plus two i, and z minus two i. Okay, right. Now let's have a look what's going on here now. What I need now is to find the residues of this function. So if I let f of z equal z plus one over z z plus 2i, z minus 2i. And let's find the residues of f. Now, I've got loads of videos um, to have a look at on how to find the residues of a function like this. So I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly right now. Now, I can see I've got poles at z equals 0, z equals 2i, and z equals minus 2i. So I've got res residue of f at 0, residue of f at 2i and the residue of f at minus 2i. So I can find those just by plugging in each of the values in there. So let's use the cover-up method for that. So when z equals 0, plug in 0 for z. So this, this one will disappear and I plug in 0 for these and plug in 0 for that. So that's going to give me 1 for my numerator and then I'm going to have 0 plus 2i and 0 minus 2i. So 2i times minus 2i. And then in this one, I need z to be 2i. So I've got 2i plus 1. So 1 plus 2i. So that's right, 2i plus 1. And then for this one, when I've got 2i, this one disappears. So now I've got 2i times 2i plus 2i, which is 4i. So we can simplify these off in a moment. And then when I've got minus 2i, I've got minus 2i for my z. So I'll write this as 1 minus 2i. And then this one disappears. And I've got 2 minus 2i times minus 4i. OK, so let's just simplify these off. 2i times minus 2i. Well, 2i times 2i gives me 4i squared, which is minus 4. Then another 4 gives me just positive 4. So that's 1 over 4. 
2i plus 1, just leave that as it is. I'm going to write 1 plus 2i. And then let's solve this one. 2i times 4i is minus 8i, sorry, is 8i squared, which is minus 8 if we simplify i squared as minus 1, so minus 8. So I'm going to write 1 plus 2i and then put a minus in front of all of my term there. So that's a negative value. Let's do the same with this one. Let's calculate that one. So this time 1 minus 2i. Okay, let's go carefully here. 2i times 4i. Well, 2i times 4i I know is negative 8. And I've got two negatives, so it stays as negative 8. So I'll put my 8 there and my negative in front of my fraction sign there. So that's my residues of my function so far. Now, my f of z is obviously my integral that I've got here. So that's all well and good. Now, what I've got is got an integral from negative infinity to in infinity of f of z dz. Now, the result of that is quite a special formula. And it's a great way of taking a shortcut for an integral instead of having to go through all the stuff. So as long as we can get to this position, this position comes pretty straightforward and it's just some simple complex analysis algebra. So the result of that will give me 2 pi i s. Now this s I'm going to come to in a moment. And plus pi i and t, which I'm also going to come to in a moment. So that is the result of that without actually doing any integration at all. All I need is the value of my residues. So first of all, let's go over what the S and the T is, and I'll go to them in a bit more detail straight after. So S is the sum of the residues in the upper half of the complex plane. So S, sum of residues in upper half of complex plane. So I just call that complex P, I just put PL actually, just make it nice and short so we can fit it all on. Now T is slightly different. It's not going to be the lower half of the complex plane. This is all the values on the real axis. So it's the sum of the residues on the real axis. So that's what we need to find out. Now to do that, what we need to do is to put these residues on the complex plane and see which one falls into S or T or neither. So, so I've got my plane are here. So this is my real line. And then up one, upward one is my imaginary line. Now I've got residues at zero. So we know straight away that's on the real axis. So that would be part of T. So this one can go to T. OK, so make a note there. 2i. So 2i is going to be somewhere here. So that's 2i. So straight away I can see that's a, a residue on the upper half of the complex plane. So that's clearly an upper half. So that one's going to be part of S. And then this one here, minus 2i, is going to be somewhere here. So minus 2i. So minus 2i, that's going to get me into the lower half of the complex plane. So therefore, that's not going to be required for our result. So, OK. So what we're going to do now? Well, first of all, let's work out what our s and our t is. Well, it's just... The residues are minus 1 plus 2i over 8. So that's going to be my s value. And my t value is going to be a quarter. So all I need to do now is plug those into this and see what that comes to. So now my integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of z dz equals 2 pi i. What is s? Well, it's minus 1 over 8. So minus 1 over 8, so I put a minus sign in there. Then I've got minus 2i over 8, which is minus i over 4. So let's put that in there in its complex form on its own. So minus i over 4. 
So that's my S. Now, what about my T? My T is just a quarter. So pi I times a quarter. Okay, right. Now here comes the re really neat part to make even easier my result of this. So instead of just multiplying all this out and hoping for the best, notice we started off, this X is in real numbers. This was my original question. Now to get the result of that, my answer must be a real number because this question wasn't in complex analysis, this was in real analysis. So if I put real numbers into that, I should get real numbers out of it. So if I get imaginary numbers out of this, they're not invited into the answer. So let's see what we've got now. So negative infinity to infinity of x plus 1 over x, x squared plus 4. So that was my original question dx. So we're back now into real analysis. What I need to do now is multiply these out and only consider the real parts. Or straight away, this is going to yield an imaginary part. So that I'm not going to need. Here I've got 2 pi i times minus 1 over 8. That's going to yield an imaginary part. So I'm not going to need that either. So this minus 1 over 8 is redundant. Now I've got 2 pi i times minus i over 4. So let's just see what, let's calculate that over here and put our result in. So 2 pi i times minus i over 4. Okay, right. Well, 2 pi i and 4, cancel that 4 to be a 2. So now I've got pi i times minus i over 2. Well, i squared is minus 1, and stick another minus in there, I get positive 1. So now this becomes pi over 2. So therefore my answer is going to be pi over 2. So that's my result of our, that integral. Now you're welcome to go and check the result by using real analysis and doing partial fractions and logarithms and arc tangents. See if you get the same answer as me with pi over 2. So I did no integration whatsoever. I just did a bit of complex analysis on it. I got to my answer, pi over 2. Okay.